welcome in today's video i will be starting the new thing that is introduction to proofs and we are going to talk about some terminologies associated with that we will learn what is direct proof and what is proof by contraposition so if you are new to the channel please do subscribe and like the videos in case if you are getting benefited from it right so let us continue so uh, if i talk about proofs there are certain terms which occur quite frequently during our discussion and one of them is theorem so in mathematics or in any discipline of science formally a theorem is a statement that can be shown to be true right so theorems are those statements for which you can write a proof and you can show that these statements are true uh, sometimes we also use a term that is propositions right and this proposition term here has a different context we already have come across proposition in logic so less important theorems sometimes are called as propositions theorem can also be referred to as facts or results what do you mean by a proof a proof is a valid argument that establishes the truth of a theorem and what i want to highlight here is the fact that the argument should be valid then we also come across terms like axioms or postulates so the statement used in proof can include axioms or postulate which are statements we assume to be true so basically uh, those statements which we find that does not merit a proof or there is no need to write the proof but we are using those statements uh, just to prove our theorem or proposition those results will be known as axioms or postulates what do you mean by a lemma so a lemma is a less important theorem that is helpful in proof of other result is called a lemma complicated proofs are usually easier to understand when they they are proven using a series of lemma where each lemma is proved individually so basically what happens that if you have a long or lengthy proof so in spite of proving the whole thing in just one go we prove a smaller results and based on those smaller result we can conclude that the theorem or the proposition that we are proving is correct then there is something called corollary so a corollary is a theorem that can be established directly from a theorem that has been proved so usually what happens that if you have a theorem so once you prove the theorem there are subsequent result which follows from that theorem those results are known as corollary and finally there is a very popular term that we also use in our day to day communication that is conjecture so what do you mean by a conjecture a conjecture is a statement that is being proposed to be true now it is important it is being proposed to be true usually on the basis of some partial evidence or a heuristic argument or the intuition of an expert when the proof of a conjecture is found the conjecture becomes theorem many times conjectures are shown to be false so they are not theorems right so what do you mean by this that when you talk to an expert they can make a, a statement based on their own experience or some partially available data or their own expertise in that domain but they have not given it uh, a very rigorous mathematical or valid argument or a kind of proof that uh, requires uh, you know for the result to be uh, true so in those cases those results which still has not been proved but it is being opined by some expert will be known as conjecture and once the proof is available we conclude that the conjecture becomes a theorem right so i hope you are clear about this terminology now let us talk about the different proof method and the first proof method that we are going to talk about is the direct proof method so what is direct proof method 
सपोज वी हैव टू फाइंड द प्रूफ ऑफ ए कंडीशनल स्टेटमेंट पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू इन दैट केस वट वी कैन डू वी कैन स्टार्ट विद द स्टेटमेंट दैट पी इज ट्रू राइट एंड आफ्टर फॉलोइंग ए सेट ऑफ वैलिड आर्गूमेंट ए सेट ऑफ वैलिड आर्गूमेंट इफ वी आर एबल टू प्रूव द दैट क्यू इज ऑल्सो ट्रू देन वी से दैट पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू इज ट्रू सो दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रूफ इज नोन एज डायरेक्ट प्रूफ आई होप यू गॉट इट दैट वी आर स्टार्ट विथ पी बींग ट्रू एंड देन वी सम हाउ यूजिंग सम वैलिड आर्गूमेंट if able to show that q is also true then in that case we uh, conclude that p implies q is true so to understand this let us take some examples so if i take this example uh, give a direct proof to the theorem that uh, if x is an integer uh, sorry if n is an odd integer then n square is also odd okay so so let us write the proof of it so how do i write the proof of the statement that if n is an odd integer then n square is odd so this is a conditional statement it has two part the first part is n is an odd integer so let us call it p and n square is odd let us call it q and to write the solution let us start with the first statement that let uh, n is an odd integer so we are starting with first statement to be true so if n is an odd integer n can be written as 2k plus 1 where the k belongs to the set of integers we know from our uh, earlier uh, understanding of the things that any odd integer can be written in the form of 2k plus 1 and if it is an even integer then it can be written as Two times some integer k. Okay, so the next we are going to write n square. So what will be n square? N square will be two k plus one whole square, which will be four k square plus four k plus one. So that can also be written as two times two k square plus two k plus one. Okay. Now, if you look at this thing here, we are able to write the n square as twice of something plus one. If you take uh, uh, this as, I uh, means you can write one more step that n square is equal to twice of suppose k one plus one, where what is k one? Where k one is two k square plus two k, and since k is an integer, two square plus two k is also an integer. so k1 belongs to z also so n square can be written as twice of k1 plus 1 so we can conclude that this implies that n square is an odd integer so uh, see the point that i want to highlight here is that here we are not very much interested in the statement as such but we are more interested in the process that we are following to prove these results so what process we have followed we have started with the first statement p and then by using some argument which we are mathematically valid we have been able to establish that n square can also be written in the form of 2k1 plus 1 where k1 is an integer so n square is an odd integer right so this kind of proof technique is known as direct proof uh next quickly uh, prove this result also and try to uh, write a direct proof of it so given that uh, uh, give a direct proof that if m and n are both perfect squares then n into m is also a perfect perfect square so how do you prove that so we we assume with the Uh, we start with a statement uh, that first statement that let m and n are both perfect squares so we assume the first statement to be true and uh, as we know that if m and n are both perfect square m can be written as a square of some integer s and n can be written as a square of some integer t right 
so where s and t both belongs to the set of integer so what is m into n m into n will be s square into t square and which in turn can be written as s into t whole square right so this implies what that mn is equal to uh, some integer let me call this as uh, w w square where w is equal to s into t and since s and t are both integers so w is also an integer and it belongs to z so mn has also been able to we are also uh, actually uh, am able to write that uh, uh, you know um, mn is equal to a square of something right so this this concludes that mn is an uh, or mn is a sorry mn is a perfect a square right so the important thing that i want to highlight here that uh, we are starting with the first statement being true and then by using our mathematical argument we are showing that the next statement is true so this is a very uh, obvious way of proving something and this method is known as direct method of proof next we are going to discuss about proof by contraposition and people slightly get confused with it so be careful about that if i have to prove the statement p implies q in our earlier videos we have seen that p implies q is equivalent to its contraposition that is negation of q implies negation of p if you have not uh, watched the earlier video please do watch to understand that how it is possible now if i have to prove p implies q in spite of proving p implies q i can start with the negation of q and then show that negation of p is true so this proof strategy is known as proof by contraposition to understand this let us take this example so if you take this example that if n is an integer and 3n plus 2 is odd then n is odd now if you try to write a direct proof possibly you will be finding it difficult to prove but i am going to use the proof by contraposition and what we have to do in this case in this case we start with the negation of this statement that n is odd so what is the negation of this statement that let n is even right we are starting with the negation of n is odd means n is even so n will look like what n will look like n is equal to 2k where k belongs to the set of integers now what is 3n plus 2 in that case 3n plus 2 can be written as 3 into 2k plus 2 and i can take 2 common and i can write it 3k plus 1 okay so we are able to write 3n plus 2 as twice of something means i can write it like this 3n plus 2 is equal to twice of some integer k1 where k1 is nothing but 3k plus 1 and because k is an integer k1 is also an integer so this gives me what this gives me that 3n plus 2 is an even integer it is an even integer so in this case what we have done in this case basically we started with the negation of the original statement means we started with negation of q right we wanted to prove p implies q what we did we started with negation of q and by following a set of argument we have shown that negation of p is true means negation of q implies negation of p what is negation of p because p is 3n plus 2 is odd so its negation is 3n plus 2 is even and that is what we have shown so using contraposition we conclude using uh, using contraposition contraposition we conclude we conclude the statement we conclude the proof right we conclude the proof of the statement that yes this statement is true right so this is also a very powerful strategy to uh, prove uh, statements uh, using contraposition so we have seen what is uh, different terminology we have seen what is direct proof uh, we also have seen what is proved by contraposition 
in the next video i will take some more examples related to contraposition and we will discuss about other ways of proving the things thanks for watching subscribe